sometimes on the internet you encounter things that are so fucking retarded you have no choice but to respond. And uh, this is one of those times. So I was perusing Gawker as I do. Uh, I have a history with the Gawker website. And since I own guns and I am also used to consider myself a liberal, I've run into this problem often of just seeing something that is so utterly fucking stupid that uh, it, it makes my brain hurt. And you can either yell at your computer screen or you can yell at your com- computer screen and record it, uh, which is what I'm going to attempt to do now. So I was on Gawker, and uh, there was an article on there on like November 27th, 28th, uh, written by one of those uh, tight jean wearing hipsters over there uh, about how guns are way extreme, bruh. Isn't it kind of extreme that you're uh, going to shoot somebody because they're going to try and kill you? That's way fucking extreme, bruh. It's way extreme. Oh my god. I'm so scared. I'm going to go comb my mustache. So, this uh, this article kind of laid out. The general premise of the article was... Uh, the title was Carrying a Gun, A Little Extreme, Don't You Think? Question mark. And uh, the author, Hamilton Nolan, uh, basically goes through this whole diatribe about how, you know, humans invented weapons in part to equalize the physical differences between us. That's perfectly understandable. But does your weapon have to be a gun? Chill out. Jesus. It makes for some people to want a weapon. Uh, it makes sense for some people to want a weapon. It wouldn't be fair to let the biggest people in the world control of everything. Yeah. And then he goes to saying how big people shouldn't control everything. You know, that, you know, after we became civilized, it was better if, you know, the smarter people ran things and not, they weren't always necessarily the biggest people. So we got sticks and we sharpened them and we invented weapons and rocks and bludgeoning instruments. Maybe you're a small or medium sized person down there in the last paragraph. You don't want a big person to come up and hop and bop you on the head and take all of your stuff. Okay, fine, fair, enough. Since the power of persuasion is not always enough, you want to get a weapon and even the odds. Okay, fine. Get yourself a little something. Ah, fair enough. Seems pretty stupid. I'm not just worried about the big people. I'm worried about the groups of smaller people who can overwhelm you and overpower you as well. But even the bigger people, the people bigger than me, uh, also, the people who have a, uh, the element of surprise, which is always big in an attack. The, the person to attack first usually wins uh, a fight, by the way. And so this is what Hamilton Nolan goes on to write about the weapons we should be using instead of guns. How about a taser? A taser is nice. Tase the big guy. Zap. Obviously, this is a motherfucker who's never been punched in the face, who has never been in a street fight, and who has never been tased or pepper sprayed and we'll get into pepper spray a little bit later he doesn't understand the fundamentals of a taser and how a taser works if you have more than one person first of all a taser is not going to work to your advantage you're going to tase one person if the taser works um, which you would have to be specifically trained on the taser to use the taser Um, the handheld tasers that don't shoot barbs out you would have to be within striking distance of the person that is bigger than you or a person that has friends with him that is attacking you. So there's another flaw to the taser argument. Uh, and if you don't make uh, the correct amount of contact or the right contact or you push it in too far or it's too far away, it's not going to do anything but piss them off. And so now you've just pissed off a raging bull that wants to take your stuff and stop you in the ground. That's not going to work out well for you either. And not to mention, if you do make the right contact, it may not completely incapacitate them. They may still be able to attack you, especially if it's a person that's on some sort of illicit substance, which it might be if it's a person that's attacking you to take your money. So, Hamilton Nolan, strike one on the taser. Learn a little bit about your weapons. And here we continue with this story. Uh, Not enough. How about a cattle prod? Poke him hard. Bzzzt. Now that's a shocker. Knock him right on, right back on his heels. I don't care how big he is. That'll do the trick. Need something a little more blunt? Want to send a message? Try some brass knuckles or a blackjack. Boom, whack. Then that'll leave a mark. Reminder not to mess with people. Message sent. Well, cattle prod is also an electroshock weapon uh, in the same category of weapons as a taser. 
So all the same rules would apply. You'd be within striking distance of a person that wants to stop you on the ground and take your stuff. Uh, if you don't make the right amount of contact, uh, it's liable to fail or just piss them off. Uh, it may not knock them down and incapacitate them. So now you've just poked them with a stick. So, uh, not to mention in some places like Washington, D.C., uh, where I'm located, uh, tasers uh, are considered guns. And you have to have the same licensing to carry a taser that you do to carry a gun. It's con considered a concealed weapon. So thanks to people like you that have created stupid rules that have not allowed people to defend themselves, we have stupid rules that don't allow us to kill, carry less than lethal options. And I'm not saying non-lethal, I'm saying less than lethal, because a taser can still be lethal, by the way. A uh, taser uh, for people with heart conditions, or even healthy people sometimes. Delivering that amount of shock to a person's system at that voltage level, at that amperage, uh, can be deadly. And it has been deadly in the past. So, what about, uh, what about brass knuckles and blackjacks? Also, things that have been made illegal by people who don't want people to be able to defend themselves. You think that by m making them illegal for the general public, you have inhibited the ability of criminals to use those items. Uh, not true. Uh, criminals will have guns. They will have tasers. Uh, we have a problem here in Baltimore with criminals having tasers and tasering people and taking their stuff. Tasers, uh, blackjacks, uh, uh, illegal. You can't carry a fucking club. Uh, that's considered a concealed weapon as well. Um, so yeah, uh, all that, all, all that stuff you've people like you have made illegal. We have no less than lethal means to defend ourselves if these less than lethal means were even worth carrying around to try and defend yourself with, which usually they're not. Uh, there's no guarantee that they're going to help protect you at all because you have to be within striking distance of your opponent or the person that's going to try and take you down. I mean, it's apparent from this fucking article, this guy is a, is a guy that's never experienced any of these fucking things. I have. I've been tasered. I've been maced. I've been beat up. Um on the course of some good uh, military training. So I, I can tell you that uh, 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 we'll get to Mace next, I guess, but uh, Taser, Blackjack, yeah, I'm not going to try to get in with, within striking distance of a person that has the element of surprise and his buddies with him. That would be the dumbest fucking thing you could possibly do. Here we have demonstrated that there is a wide array of, re array of weaponry uh, that you as a medium-sized person can use to protect yourself from predators. No, what you have demonstrated is there is a list of less than lethal options that we are not allowed to carry. Uh, and even if we were, you have demonstrated that they are not really suitable options for viable self-defense. If you actually care about living through a situation where you have to defend yourself. Not to mention that if you get caught with any of these things or using any of these things... Uh, guess what? You're going to jail because they're they're fucking illegal. You dumb fuck. It has come to our attention, though, that many of you taking this idea too far, you have decided to carry a gun, a real gun. What? I'm going to carry a fake fucking gun? End up like Tamir Rice? That makes absolute fuck. Yeah, I'm a, if I'm carrying a gun, I'm going to carry a real gun, a gun that shoots metal bullets that puts holes in people and causes them to die. Uh, whoa! Now, whoa! A gun? Is that really necessary? Just because you have an innate and probably only half rational fear of muggers or home invaders or faceless thugs seeking to take advantage of you, you have to carry a killing machine? Immediately, you must take the situation to sudden death? Punishment for anyone crossing you in any way must be a hole in the head? Have you respected that your sense of proportionality might be somewhat out of whack? No. Uh, what I had have considered out of whack is that uh, I could be a, a law-abiding citizen minding my own business when a person intent on doing me harm to take my stuff approaches me uh, with violence in mind and decides to try and use violence to either uh, assault me and take my stuff or to tell me, use threats of violence to make me hand over my stuff. Have they ever considered that it might not be worth losing their life to, try to make victims of people and to victimize people? Have they ever considered that? 
I'm the one minding my own business. They are the one approaching me and exacting violence. You dumb fuck. Yes, I will take the situation to sudden death. Because if criminals realize that they will be facing death in order to simply try and take my wallet, maybe they won't try and take my fucking wallet, you dumb motherfucker. Yes, I will put a hole in a motherfucker that's trying to take my stuff, and they're using threats of violence to do it. Because I don't know how far they're willing to take it. I have used my gun before. Guess what? I didn't have to fight. I didn't have to shoot anybody, luckily. But I would have. Wouldn't have been happy about it. As a combat veteran. But, uh, yeah, I, I would have done it. To protect myself and my stuff, my, my person. Since I'm not the one approaching him, telling him to give, give me his stuff. And he's the one coming to me and saying, hey, give me your stuff or I'm going to hurt you, uh, yeah, I'll put a hole in him. And I wouldn't shoot for the head, I'd shoot for the, the body, uh, because it's the bigger target. So, continuing on here with uh, Mr. Hamilton Nolan's fucking thing, his little diatribe here. Really, you're going to shoot someone with a gun? I think I covered that, yes, I would shoot someone with a gun. Instead of a taser or pepper spray. Oh, let's talk about pepper spray, shall we? Pepper spray has the ability to incapacitate a person, um, but if they are on any sort of illicit substances, the, sometimes that pepper spray is not going to affect them very much at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, they can continue to inflict damage upon you even after being maced or sprayed. And let's talk about pepper spray here in the great District of Columbia where you have these very draconian gun laws that don't allow people to carry anything uh, for self-defense. Uh, pepper spray is considered a handgun in uh, the District of Columbia, and it must be registered, and it can only be a certain type of uh, pepper spray. It's a very specific type. It's the only type you can carry here. So good luck finding that specific type and then registering it with the Metropolitan Police Chief, who's the arbiter that determines whether or not you can carry that pepper spray. Yeah, great system, isn't it? We would like to carry these less than lethal options, but you've also taken those away from us, you and your ilk. You fucking beta male hipster regressive motherfuckers. Oh, so here, where are we? Instead of a taser or pepper spray or bopping them with a stick. Okay, a taser, pepper spray, or bopping them with a stick. I think we've already covered that. Carrying a club or mace of any kind is illegal almost everywhere in the United States. Any kind of bludgeoning instrument, an asp, those retractable batons. I would like to carry one of those in my bag. It would be a great force multiplier, a great less than lethal option to use to get myself out of situations where people want to come up on me and inflict violence upon me. But I'm not allowed to because people like you have made that also illegal because we wouldn't want people to defend themselves against common criminals. And it's not, uh, and it's not out of the realm of possibility. I moved from Texas to Maryland, lived between Baltimore and D.C., and increased my chances of being a victim of violent crime by a hundred times. So I have a hundred times more chance now of being a victim of violent crime than I did in Texas. In Texas, where I could carry a concealed handgun, by the way. Here I cannot. Here I cannot carry pepper spray, I cannot carry an asp, I cannot carry a knife over three and a half inches. There is no option. No option here that is good. And, uh, okay, you're kind of a maniac. I say that as a concerned fellow citizen. A maniac. Uh, Self-preservation is natural amongst all sentient beings. So if I'm a maniac because I want to protect myself or my family, um, blame genetics. I, I can't help it that you're a, a beta fuck that would roll over and just rather be robbed or raped then defend yourself. So you have that option and you can do that, but I would prefer to have the option to protect myself. Oh, I only carry a gun because other people have guns. No, that is not a reason. No, that is a reason to have a bulletproof vest, not a gun. That makes absolutely no fucking sense. By the way, there's legislation being passed to make bulletproof vests illegal. So even defending my body from a bullet is now going to be illegal. Thanks to people like you, by the way, you fuck. 
Have a bulletproof vest, not a gun. Carrying a gun to shoot people dead at the slightest provocation is still at its core insane. Cool it. Shooting people dead at the slightest provocation? provocation? No, it's called escalation of force, you dumb fuck. That's why I've used my gun two times and not shot anybody. Usually brandishing, which brandishing is illegal, by the way. Unless you're in a life-threatening situation, which I considered myself to be in. I pulled the gun out. That was enough to de-escalate the situation. I didn't have to shoot anyone. Also, using words beforehand. Every concealed handgun course I've been to has, caught, has taught conflict de-escalation. And when conflict de-escalation fails, you know, you, you take proper defensive tactics to uh, get out of it. So no, not at the slightest provocation. Uh, pulling the gun out would be a last resort because that also has a tendency to make things get amped up. Another notch. So you, pulling the gun out would be a last resort, even if, like, if a five foot tall woman comes up and starts slapping me, I'm not going to pull my gun out. I'm probably just going to shove her down on the ground and keep walking and try to de-escalate the situation. So, yes, shooting, I, I actually agree with you, shooting someone at the slightest provocation at its core is insane. But if I feel my life is threatened or to get out of a very bad situation, uh, uh, not insane. Very sane. Self-preservation is very sane. It's very sane of sentient beings to want to protect themselves, you dumb fucking hipster. And that last sentence, cool it, uh, I mean, uh, whatever. Um, you're, I mean, you're obvious, Hamilton Nolan is obviously a person that's never been in a fight, never been punched in the face, never been mace tasered or uh, slashed at with a knife, uh, never been shot at, uh, all those things I have been. So, uh, not to mention, I've done, I've done a lot of getting punched in the face. I have a big mouth, and yes, I have been punched in the face before. Um, in both the armed military training, where I've learned combatives, and uh, also because uh, I have a big mouth. So yeah, I have been punched in the face a lot. Uh, I have never shot anybody uh, with my handguns here in the United States. Um, but I would to defend myself, and uh, I have come close. But I didn't, because uh, uh, shooting people at the slightest provocation at its core is uh, a little insane, yeah. That's why uh, you'll find that uh, concealed handgun uh, licensees have the lowest rates of committing crime amongst all the people in the United States. So look at, uh, look at crime rates for concealed handgun licensees versus crime rates for average citizens without them. A lot lower. Because we don't want to risk losing this thing that we just paid sometimes thousands of dollars in lawyers' fees and licenses and taxes and extortion to get. Because if you do something wrong, you lose your concealed handgun license, and we don't want to lose it. That's probably something else you don't understand. Because you've never done it. You've never gone through the process. You're speaking out of your fucking ass, like Doc always does. So, Hamilton Nolan, with that, uh, you can go fuck yourself, you dumb fucking beta male hipster regressive fuck. <laughs> <laughs>